when somebody in pop culture thinks of G.I. Joe Duke, they think of this goofy grinning guy from 1983 with a chiseled jaw, airborne wings, khaki shirt and olive drab pants and a green helmet that said he was ready to take on the challenges that Cobra presented. However, this wasn't the only Duke we got. And in fact, in the 90s, we actually got two Dukes that are pretty cool in their own right, but together they actually may surprise you. In 1991 and 1993 saw the release of two Dukes, and in 1991 is pictured on the right in that he's riding his ballistic missile, and then on the left is the 1993 Duke from the Battle Corps line. So together these were pretty cool in a, in a small departure with marketing that redefined Duke partially, but not erasing the memory and what would persevere in the future. In 1991, Duke V3 came out, and Duke version 3 was the first departure from the original mold originally used in 1983 for the mail away. So gone was his airborne inspired backpack, gone was his small submachine gun and binoculars, but he retained his removable helmet while gaining a more desert inspired camouflage with the dark red paint appliques for the camouflage. He came with a machine gun and a knife molded out of brown plastic, very similar in color to the gloves. And he also came with a missile launcher, which sits on a brown plastic tripod and it has a red seat on top of that. And it's spring loaded too for added fun as all the 1990 action figures were going to a spring loaded. Duke came with a stand, but it also, he was also available to sit on his rocket launcher, which does look as bad as you'd expect because it does look like the mini battle packs from several years earlier. He does look like a little kid on the quarter machines out in front of the department stores. Now, one thing interesting to note about Duke of 1991 is the plastic has a habit of self disintegrating and he can be largely a pain to find complete with brown plastic parts that are not deteriorated in some form. So we'll take a closer look at the knife because right now the knife is the worst piece I have. And as you can see, you can see the stress marks right there because the plastic is so weak and brittle. And I even putting it into his thumbs using extreme care. You can see the stress mark on the thumb. Now the gun I picked up from a different figure. So the gun shows almost no uh, wear or discoloration. But for whatever reason, so for whatever reason, this gun did not experience the same uh, storage uh, hazards as this knife did. Also, the tripod for the missile launcher, you can see it's starting to develop stress cracks right there. So that is a, another piece that's commonly broken or missing. So overall, I mean, he's pretty good. I mean, he came out with a decent sculpt. It would get reused in the, uh, to the more recent O-ring lines in 2003-ish, and it's a good sculpt with, you know, the pistol and, you know, the golden grenade here and the shells right over here, the 40 millimeter shells, and you got a good vest. It um The vest mold reminds me of the 1986 aesthetic used on the likes of Roadblock and Cross Country and even Low Light. You know, you know, nicely constructed. The red is um a little bit bright but it doesn't really detract from the overall aesthetic especially as 1991 we were getting more involved in the middle east um you know culminating in the gulf war which would have happened after the figure was released and the other thing too the helmet is removable the helmet did also was reused in the 2000s but we got this nice serious face of a veteran which looks really good 
And actually, the I would say the head sculpt is superior to the rest of the figure. The 1993 Battle Corps Duke is clearly inspired by the events of the Gulf War and the aesthetic of the desert camouflage that was worn during the war. So a little zoom in on the card art. And you can see how, you know, you can clearly see the desert camo pattern that was used in the Gulf War era as it was prominently shown on CNN and other uh, media outlets at the time. So now in 1993, they were able to translate that down to this Duke figure, which came with, you know, another spring-loaded weapon. Now, for whatever reason, this spring-loaded weapon fit much easier in his left hand, like the card art shows, rather than the right hand. And it still works great. And I only took off the one, the one weapon from the weapon tree because I really wanted him complete, but I didn't really want to have to have a Ziploc bag with all the loose parts floating around. You know, he comes with a good shotgun here. Good shotgun here. You know, you got a wacky machine gun here. Re, uh, you know, and all these are reused molds. You know, he's got a submachine gun here. You know, the machete originally used with muskrat. And the one saving grace of all 1990s figures coming with his own foot stand. Now, looking at the figure itself, you can see a really good model of a soldier. And I'll take this off. As you can see, it's a tight fit. And being the first time it was ever used, remind me of the times. Now, the 1993 Duke fought for my attention on the shelf, but I, for whatever reason, I chose to go with 1993's Battle Corps Bazooka and 1993's Dr. Mindbender. This guy was really close. I hemmed and hawed on him. And when I was originally getting back into G.I. Joe, I was like, hey, didn't I buy this guy? And no, he didn't. But overall, you can see a pretty good action figure with some hefty arms. I mean, these uh, these biceps look like they could definitely knock out a Cobra or other insurgent. Good hefty arms on that. You know, and he's got a great sculpted chest. You know, modern army, you know, a harness, he's got a good grenade, a pouch, some pockets, nice molded knife on the side and that's sheath, and you got another pistol here. But overall, I mean, this is a really good looking modern army guy. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be Duke. Now, looking at the face, we're going to take a quicker, closer look at the face. And now here's what I think. I think the, you got this little serious face. And I have another one where the face looks surprised, a little awkward. But over here, you got a little something on the chin strap. It looks like a little piece of hair in the mold. If you look below the lower lip, right there, and then you know the chin strap, you got that little line there. It doesn't look perfect, but overall, it looks pretty cool. And you got a molded on helmet, which is pretty on brand, but it, unfortunately, it's just not camouflage like the rest of the guy. Now, with 1991's Duke having, a, I feel, a better head than a body, and 1993's Duke having a better body than a head, can, can the sum of two be greater than its parts? So, presenting to you version 3.5 Duke, using the version 3 head, the version 4 body, Dusty's backpack, Grunt's M16, I think... With just parts, it's a great, uh, what would be called a Lazy Boy Custom or a kit bash of a early 90s military soldier. The body shows strength, the head shows determination, and with the helmet that comes off, it's just a great look for G.I. Joe. It's almost like they had the molds, why didn't they just finish pulling it off? So that is G.I. Gary's quick review of the 1990s Dukes with my favorite being, of course, my kit bash. Remember, this is Pina Comics. Subscribe and like this video. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when we get new videos posted. Also, visit us at www.pintocomics.com. 
Find us on Facebook and Twitter. Search Pint O Comics. And if you're on Instagram, Pint underscore O underscore Comics. And until then, see ya. Yeah.